Warning. Warning. Hey, I'm Bob with Laguna Tools. Around here they call me Router Bob. I'm really excited because this is a first CNC video from the new Laguna facility in Irvine, California. Unfortunately, our studio is not quite finished, so we've made a makeshift studio here in the showroom. Today's video is really about four axis or fourth axis machining. Uh, what we're showing you today is a Smart Shop 2 with a rotary axis on it. But this also applies to some of our other products that also are offered with that. So the concepts we're going to go through today apply for all of those. Okay, today's four axis project is a gun stock. This is actually a stock for a Ruger model 1022. It's inleted and that's what we're going to make on the machine. Before we start, let's look at the software and let's see how we get this ready for the machine. This is a model of the stock. It's a 3D model. This is actually Rhino that I'm using. And we're, if you look down in there, you see the, the inletting or the machining for that. Now, if you think about it, there's really two parts of a stock. Because you gotta, let's unpack this a little bit. One is, what is the outside shape of the stock? So I can really make any shape I want. I can make whatever outside shape I want. What makes it fit the action is the inletting. So think of the inletting as the shape that you machine inside of that outside stock. So if you think about it, you can make almost any kind of rifle stock you want. And what that brings you into is the ability to do customization. And in most things, customization is more profitable than just making competitive stocks. Okay, now that we know what we want to make, let's start looking at the steps that are required to actually make this on the machine. Well, since parts don't hang in space while you're machining, we're going to have to make some provision for holding the part in the machine. So, what we've done is we've added some plugs. So those are just additions to the model that extend out from both ends that attach to, in one way or the other, to the machine. So. You just when you select those plugs, think about what you're going to have to do to trim those off, and, and having a natural trim plane seems to work. Now, having said that, then the next thing is what is the blank going to look like? So let's turn another layer on over here and let's look at the blank. Now there's the blank, all right, and let's let's ghost that so you can really see what's in there. Now you can see how the model itself is in the material. Right, that's what we start with. Now, now let's think about the machine itself. We we figured out what the blank looks like. We figured out what the model is going to look like. Now, how do we know where we align it in the machine? Well, I've got a graphic here that works pretty good that shows you that. Now, this is the plane that represents the center axis it's going to rotate on, and this circle on the end is really the swing. Now, let's talk about that whole concept of swing for a second. Now, first off. A fourth axis set up like this, which really has a work envelope that's a cylinder. So it turns 360, and the size of the cylinder is really a function of the space between the center axis and the guide rails themselves. Now the one we're using right now, it's slightly over 5 inches, so therefore I could turn a cylinder uh, 10 inches in diameter. But there's another factor that you really got to look into, and that is gantry clearance. How tall is the gantry? How high can the spindle go up? Because it's more than just what is the capacity of the turner, it's I have to have enough z-axis. So you have to know that before you spec the machine out. Here's how we're going to attack this from a machining standpoint. We're going to mount the blank in the machine in this orientation. We're going to roll it up on its side, and we're going to rough this out. A roughing pass is to get rid of material as quickly as you can and leave a certain amount of material for the finish pass, which produces a final surface. So we're going to rough this side first. We're going to flip it 180. The machine will do this automatically. We're going to rough this side. Now the reason I'm doing that is sometimes you might get a blank that the moisture is not balanced and it might, if you do everything on one side to start with, you may get some warpage. So we're going to rough the first side, roll it over, rough the second side. Then we're going to do our finish pass here. Then we're going to roll it back over 180 degrees. Then we're going to do our finish pass here. 
and pretty much once that's done the stock has its shape then we're going to roll it up here the barrel is actually a 3d surface so we're going to machine that then we're going to flip it over to the underside and there's a little area at the bottom that's a 3d surface i've opened up rhino cam inside of rhino rhino cam is a plug-in that allows us to do all our tool pathing right inside on the rhino model and I'm using the pro version because it, it just makes it much simpler to, to do this. All right, so now what we're going to do here, here's the first tool path, and we'll select that, and we'll turn it, and you can see. Now, <clears throat> the material in the machine will be turned up on its side. In Rhino, you, Cam, you basically see the tool paths in the right orientation. The part isn't rotated. And so that's a rough tool path, so that's going to be done with a half-inch ball tool. And when we're finished with that, we'll have that side roughed out. Then we're going to flip it 180 and do the same thing over here. Okay, now while it's turned, then we're going to do the finish pass. And so that gives us our final surface. Now, a finish pass then is determined by uh, how close the, the ball tool uh, travels. In our case, we're probably going to use a step over with a half inch tool, probably 8%. That should give us a really nice smooth surface. You have to decide how much you want to sand and how much handwork you want to do. Okay, now then we're going to flip it to the other side again, and that, now we're able to put the finish pass on that opposite side. So at this point, you've pretty much got the, the stock shape, the, the 3D part of the stock. There's a couple other things. One is we're actually going to machine, we're going to do a rough machining first of the barrel groove, and then the finish machining of that. Okay, and then finally in 3D, we're going to roll down to the bottom. And we're, there's a the 1022 has a little bitty radius area out here, and we're going to cut that. And that's going to complete the 3D machining. Okay, now let's look at the actual machining simulation on the software. So what it's actually going to show is the blank and the results of the toolpath. I've actually turned the geometry off underneath it so you can't really see it. So this is showing you what the result's going to be of the process. So as you can see, there's the rough passes. Just goes down and layer, layer, layer. Okay, there's the machining on one side, and then we'll do our rough machining. On the other side, you can see how it's doing the same thing. So once this toolpath operation is completed, we've got a roughed out shape of the stock itself. Okay, once that step's done, then we do the finish pass. And this is really what determines the final shape and the smoothness. Once again, as we said earlier, a finish pass is typically going to be a, a very close step over, eight or 10% of the diameter of the tool, and that gives you the smoothness. Okay, that's the finished pass on our first side. Now, let's do the same thing on the other side. So the process is the same. Once again, now, we've just rotated the stock 180 degrees. Now, the tool pass for the finished pass are being applied. Let's pause right here and let's talk about the Rhino Cam software a little bit. I said earlier that I, I really like the Pro version, and here's one of the reasons. If you notice, when we started, our model actually had the inletting in it, but you see that that was ignored. So I didn't really have to account for that. I didn't have to plug the holes or, or have have two models because it automatically drops that surface straight down, and that's a real time saver because. You know, there's, there's basically a rough tool path and a finished tool path on each side, and that model, the shape of the stock, is pretty much defined. Now, I do need to do a couple more things that I can't get to from the side, and one of those is the barrel groove. So, let's go over here, and we'll simulate that. Now, the barrel groove is going to, we're going to rough it out first, 
and you'll see the rough passes and then we'll see a finish pass. Once again, the difference in the rough pass and the finish pass is pretty much step over and rough passes will go multiple levels sometimes. All right, and that completes that. So now our barrel groove is, is machined. Now we've got one final operation with that tool and there's a little 3D surface we have to cut down on the bottom. And we'll do that. It's right down there and you see how that gets machined out. Look up close on that. And that completes the, the 3D machining. So we basically have a stock. All we like now is the inletting. Okay, now let's look at the inletting part. And, and really inletting is what we call 2.5D machining. So it's really cutting a shape at a certain depth. And, and, and that's really all inletting is. And the Ruger 1022 is fairly simple. You can see if you look down into those ledges. So we've got to say, okay, well, what do we have to do in order to, to machine that out and leave those? So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to actually go in there and pocket that down. And once again, the tool is just going to step down and go around, and when it's finished, it's going to have that first depth, and then that bottom hole gets pocketed. We're going to do the rest of it from the underside. All right, now, so if we go over to the bottom face, so we'll just turn this so we can look at it, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is actually machine this hole. And the second thing, now we'll get in here, all right? So that becomes a pocketing, and then there's another pocketing because it has to be cut deeper. When we get finished, all our inletting's done. Now that we've looked at each of the tool paths that are required for pocketing or for inletting, for instance, now let's look at the simulation and see what the results are actually going to be on the model. So we'll select that top face and we'll simulate it. There's two tool paths. There's the first pocket. And there's the second pocket. And you'll see how the, the result of the tool path. Okay, then let's go to the bottom face. So we'll flip this over. And we'll do our tool paths that are required there. So we'll just tell it to simulate. There's the first pocket. And there it is. And when you're finished, it's really nice when you're doing this in a solid model because you can tell if you went deep enough because it show I can see through. So that looks pretty good. And let's see, let's check our hole out. If we can see it in the simulation. It's, it's right there, it's just hard to see. It came out pretty darn good. All right, now, now that we've gone through this and explained it, now it's time to go to the machine and let's make this gun stock. As you can see, we have the blank in the turner. Everything's ready to go, but let's step back and let's look at this actual machine configuration. As I said earlier, this whole rotary axis concept can be applied to a number of our different machines. This particular machine is a Smart Shop 2 that we built specifically for this. This actually has a six and a half foot table and that was all driven by the customer requirement for parts. Because it's a Laguna Smart Shop 2, it includes the Laguna Touch Controller that we developed in a project with BNR Automation from Austria. That really means it's easy to learn and it's easy to use. These machines are available with a number of spindle options. This happens to be a non-tool chain spindle. It's liquid cool, so you can run long cycles without having to worry about the spindle getting hot. When you combine that with our tool touch-off system, it's pretty simple to change tools. Because it's a Smart Shop 2, it features a one-piece all-welded base frame. It features helical racks on the X and Y axis. It features precision ball screw on the Z axis. And it includes world-class contour guide rails for motion. Okay, I transferred the files to the machine control. Let's make a gun stock.
isn't that neat? Holy cow, look at the detail. Huh. You know what's amazing about this also is I really didn't have to do anything. I loaded the material, ran the program, and it runs by itself. It rotates. That is really neat. That's a wonderful product to kick off our new facility. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. We had a great time producing it. It just amazes me what you can do with the CNC router when you add fourth access capability. If you need more information, you can call us at 800-234-1976 or you can find us on the internet at www.lagunatools.com. Thank you for watching.